Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to Decidedly Vanilla. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're all very well. Hope you guys are ready for a build episode because a build episode it will be. I've been looking around for locations to build the last of my four obelisks and there are going to be four. I pretty much decided that four was the limit and it kind of makes more sense that right now these three are arranged in a way that sort of makes them look like a triangle if I can find a decent spot to stand so you can actually see all three of them but we are a little way out here so maybe I should get a tad bit closer. Yeah there is one there's one coming up from the temple right now where I have a haste beacon set up so I can dig out the underside of there but the diamond beacon is there the emerald one is there and then the redstone one is off in the distance beyond there and right now they kind of form a triangle and it looks pretty good as is they're pretty well spaced out but I thought it would be good to have a fourth one over here nearer the shipwreck I think a little bit nearer and I can't get up any of these trees because <laughs> they're all they're all covered in vines but they're all in different places so yeah I decided to build decided to build the last of our our beacons over here by the shipwreck kind of probably around this location on one of these shorter trees a little way in from the coast but definitely like yeah some, somewhere over here maybe on that one over there I think it was even that one over there that I decided on earlier, but I've just kind of been flying around checking stuff out. And so we're going to build the uh, the fourth beacon today, which is going to be exciting. It's going to be the the end of that particular project, I think. Although I do still want to build a kind of corrupted one somewhere. Still want to work on exactly where that's going to be, how that's going to play into things. And it may even be like it's crashed somewhere, like it's actually come down and has sort of stuck into the ground somewhere because somebody suggested having a, a sort of crash site for one of them or or, or almost like a, a launch site for them, like there's some sort of basin that they've risen out of, which is kind of a neat idea. So I'm playing around with stuff like that in the background. But yeah, I wanted to start off today with a bit of a time-lapse build and then we're going to talk, we're going to have a bit of a, a state of the union for my base in general and see where we're at and see exactly what else... I want to do with this place before we are through with it because as you guys will know Minecraft 1.13 is on its way we don't know exactly when it's going to be it's probably not going to be for a good few months yet I think the last estimate was probably around summer it was going to arrive and we've only just started spring so it's going to be a little way off but I have a feeling that the server is probably going to reset around that time because we have custom terrain here and a lot of it is already generated like a lot of the ocean around here is generated differently to how default Minecraft does it. And right now in the snapshots, they've actually removed the custom terrain option. So you can't load up worlds with customized terrain in the snapshot, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, like vanilla worlds just won't load if they have anything other than the default world generation settings. And so I'm a little bit concerned that with custom worlds like this, we still won't be able to import them in the snapshot because they are... Why are these little diorite pillars down there? What are they doing? Somebody been leaving those? I'm not sure. Anyway, <laughs> going to avoid looking at that for now in case that's something that I should be paying attention to later. But yeah, they are uh, they are hopefully going to put the customized worlds back in before the full release of 1.13. But just to, to be on the safe side, and because this world is developed at this point and some of our more recent server members could be given kind of a fresh start to, to uh, an opportunity to start along with the rest of us and not have to build everything up from nothing whilst everybody else around them has a ton of stuff. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting a bit long-winded here, but we might end up resetting the server for 1.13 is what I'm saying. And so I kind of want to make sure that I'm not biting off more than I can chew and so that I can actually wrap up the base project here and feel like I've completed it to a certain extent, but there is still a ton of stuff I want to do. So anyway, let's, let's do a time-lapse. Let's do the time-lapse for this last obelisk and then... We're going to talk about what we're going to do with the rest of the base after that.
Shout out to Nitro, shout out to Glacier. Huh, I want the ice you never paid for. I got a bankroll, becoming major. Huh, I'll zip you up just like a tailor. I got the world in my hands, where's the glory in that? I need more for the kids, thinking matter of fact. I need rats for the people straight up finishing last. I need bars for the kids who care less for a max. Yeah, shape up, parallelogram. Don't string yourself out on any paragraphs. Ride up, little homie, fill up a notepad. Write words that you know will make an impact. Ooh, I caught myself in riding dumb tracks. So I started soaring, I relived that. Still pulling up to you, I'm rapping 10 raps. I was taught I would Apollo, I took 10 classes. 100 people, I don't been that. Yo, people took me down, I felt a relapse. Woo! I got potential, gotta see ya. Yo, I'm reverential to my leaders. Hello, <laughs> welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. I'm really happy with this. I think it's good. I think it's it's an interesting enough design. It's different enough from the other guys out there. This is another seven wide beacon base, so not the not the full tier four beacon, but a tier three in there. And right now it's giving me speed. Well, it's not right now. Right now it will give me speed if I go up there. But like I said, several times <laughs> throughout the making of these things, the point is not to have the beacon effects. The point is to have these things up in the sky being mysterious. And I think this one looks really good. I think it kind of follows along with the theme I talked about in a recent episode. I think it was even the last episode where I mentioned the the kind of crystals from Final Fantasy playing into this idea and there being four of them and each one being sort of in charge of an element. So that one is the earth one with the trees. This one is the air one because yellow apparently represents air because air is transparent, guys, and you can't see it, but it's got to have a color of some sort. And I like the top is kind of open to the air. That's kind of what I was going for with that. Also, I ran out of quartz, <laughs> so so there wasn't really a whole lot else I could have done with the quartz on that. But yeah, that's that's looking really nice. I especially like the corners. Like if you look at this thing from the corners, it's got a really elegant sort of wavy pattern to it. Instead of if you look at it from the side, it still looks good, but it kind of looks like, I don't know, animal horns or something like that, which is not necessarily what I was going for. But I tend to freestyle these things. Like I've not done a great deal of planning for these obelisks as I go along. I haven't done a, any kind of creative builds except initially when I was making the redstone one, I just wanted to check that it would look the way I wanted it to look, the way I imagined it in my head. And I think so far they've they've, they've turned out really, really well. I think that's that's a good, a good set of beacons <laughs> right there. And of course the one in the temple we'll eventually end up removing, but right now it is down there, like I said at the start of the episode, so that I can have the haste effect while I mine out the basement of the temple. So let me talk about the state of the base. State of the base right now is we have a temple, we have a bunch of aesthetic builds that don't do a whole lot, we have a villager trading section over here, and this is the bit I want to touch on right now, is the villager trading bit, because there are a few villagers in here who are giving me decent trades. Still don't have a mending librarian, but there are a few that have decent traits. I have occasionally been bringing these guys down here in minecarts just to get them out of that box, and then if I don't like what the trades are, I just kind of let them loose. So occasionally you will see nitwits or cartographers or people like that wandering around here. Do not worry. They haven't gotten out. You don't need to post a comment saying, like, the villagers are out, because they are out intentionally. 
is the thing. And the rest of these guys who are in minecarts are the permanent residents of this place. And they are all pretty much zombie-proofed as far as I can tell. So if one of these guys gets bit and despawned, it ain't no big thing. If one of these guys got bit and despawned, I would wonder exactly how that had happened because I think they're all pretty much zombie-proofed in here. They've got gates and fences in front of them. They've got trap doors, like either up there to stop baby zombies from walking in the sides, like on top of these fences like that, or down a block so they're actually kind of in front of the villager there and that stops baby zombies getting in as well because you don't have the the height difference like you, you can't walk inside there in fact maybe this guy could benefit from something being on the corner here because they could potentially walk up to him on the diagonal but even that is slightly tenuous and he's a leather worker i don't really use these guys often now the guys i do use often are the librarians and this guy doesn't have a particularly great paper trade but i think he trades some decent books Respiration, Depth Strider 3. Okay, so that's, for some reason, I was keeping that guy. I have a couple of other librarians around, like this guy has a 24 paper trade, which is really great. I think that's probably the best paper trade you can have. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm always looking for new additions to this little section down here. But thing is, right now, I don't have a sugarcane farm, because I disabled the sugarcane farm at the temple in a previous episode, or maybe just off camera. But yeah, this thing up here, it now just grows to the limit and doesn't have any redstone behind it activating this because I want to do something to the temple down here and you can see I've already made a bit of a start. Downstairs in the temple there is actually going to be some stuff under here and that is kind of tying into this. I want to make a proper actually efficient sugarcane farm for myself because let's face it the one that was up there it was dropping stuff and it was it was triggering somewhat regularly it was getting a decent collection of sugarcane down here, but not nearly enough to be trading with regularly, to be making my own fireworks, so I don't have to visit the rocketry in Seahaven all the time. And I kind of want to start a little redstone farm area down here. Now, redstone farms are not something I normally focus on when it comes to building stuff on DV. At least, uh, in, in general, in Minecraft, I don't spend a whole lot of time doing redstone stuff. And the reason for that is because I'm not very good at it, and also because when I start farming stuff i don't like copying other people's designs to be honest i a lot of the time i will avoid doing stuff like that because it feels plagiaristic it feels like i'm not using my own intelligence to work out how i can best achieve my goals i'm just copying other people and you guys will probably have seen the same farm designs over and over again in other people's channels and you get a little bit tired of them and i want to keep things fresh and interesting for you so i'm going to try and work on a few redstone farm designs down here and maybe some crop farms and i mean i have a nano farm over there by the villager trading outpost which is kind of exposed right now so maybe i will either cover that up or create some kind of crop farm down here that i can use with some regularity and there's some other stuff that i want to do just some other little bits and pieces that are going to improve my quality of life and maybe allow me to get quicker access to trading materials and building materials and that kind of stuff but speaking of building materials, I want to expand the actual structures we're building here because <laughs> the, the vast majority of my builds lately have been just kind of aesthetic builds. They've been stuff like Nessie or they've been landscaping or they've been these obelisks or they've been the pirate ship that's over there. I haven't built a lot of like houses and stuff and structures like this temple. The temple is big, obviously, and is definitely the biggest example of what I want to build around here. But... I do want to expand areas around the temple into something that vaguely resembles civilization and not just this monolithic thing out in the middle of nowhere and then nothing else around it to indicate that, you know, where did people even live when they built this, you know? So I, I kind of want to, I want to do a little bit more landscaping, a bit more terraforming around here just to level things out a little bit and make this area a little bit more accessible. And then I want to start building stuff around it, probably in a similar style to this. I might stick with sandstone because I really like the contrast of how pale the sandstone is versus how bright, how almost luminescent the green grass is here in the jungle. So that's kind of what I want to focus on for the next few episodes. And I'm going to try and make something resembling like a, a, a town, like a central or uh, South American ancient civilization kind of town out here in the middle of this jungle. Uh, it's not going to be not going to be particularly accurate for that era and that kind of place in the world because I am not I'm not a, a I'm not a great study of 
architecture and like other civilizations i just go on what feels right i go on my instinct and i go by what i think will look good in minecraft so obviously there's going to be a lot of liberties taken here and i don't want anybody anybody leaving comments on here saying you know i am a an anthropologist or whatever and you know i've i've i'm a historian i've studied the structures of this time and this looks nothing like it that's that's not the idea here we're not going for accuracy we're going for style we're getting points for style here so that's the, that's the plan. I think that's what I'm going to focus on for the next few episodes. And I do want to do some more stuff over at Sea Haven, but Sea Haven has been getting a little hectic lately. There are <laughs> a lot of flying builds up here. There are these phantom things. There are airships that seem to have come here to scrape up the wheat. <laughs> and harvest it for this giant thing, which looks really awesome. I have to say, like, some of the stuff people have been building around here is pretty much insane. There are hot air balloons up here that are on fire. I think that, is that Cirque's house has kind of gone through a few more iterations lately. Mythical Sausage's house over there is ever expanding. I feel like a lot of stuff is going on here, and I feel like you guys will probably be able to keep up if you watch other people's channels on TV, and if you don't, I thoroughly recommend you do. Links to them are always in the description, so go check them out if you like. And yeah, I, I don't know, like my little peaceful island over there has kind of stayed away from all of this shenanigans. And I don't know if I want to develop this and my jungle base at the same time. But I want you guys in the audience to let me know how you feel about that. Do you think episodes over at the base all the time are okay? Do you feel like I should come over here into the town and mix things up a little bit? Obviously, like, exclude the idea of collabs from this because hopefully we'll be able to do some more collabs with people anyway regardless of whether that's at the town or at my base or whatever but considering the amount of building that's going on over here I think I'm okay leaving this place to other people for the time being and only popping in as and when I need to so I'm going to put a poll over in the end cards be sure to check that out and while you're there subscribe to my second channel. I have a second channel called Pixel VODs where I'm uploading all of my archived video on demand Twitch streams uh, so you guys can subscribe over there if you want to check out some of the Final Fantasy stuff I've been playing over on Twitch. There's even a couple of Minecraft streams on there now. I know the ending of my airship build in Sky Factory is up there, the, the one that I uploaded the time lapse for a little while ago. And it would be great to get a few more subscribers over there if you guys are interested in that kind of thing. Not least because then I could finally get myself a custom channel URL and ditch the, you know, string of characters that the channel currently is. So, so while you're there, I would really appreciate you subscribing to that. But, uh, you know, don't do it if you're not going to watch the stuff every now and again, because false subscribers are always uh, a bit of a problem. Like you don't want to have a completely dead community over there. So I want to get a good idea of who's actually going to be there subscribing to that stuff and watching it when they can. So anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I feel like I've waffled an awful lot and not got a huge amount done other than that beacon over at the jungle, but I'm happy I've done that because that's that's that project out of the way and now I can get cracking on some of the some of the building stuff around there. And maybe I don't know, maybe we'll come back here and build a shop of some kind, but I'm not certain what that shop is going to be. So if you have any suggestions for that, of course, leave them in the comments. It'd be great to hear what you guys come up with. And that'll be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching Decidedly Vanilla. As always, my name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.